Hello and welcome. Today I am so excited to share with you the new Chanel Jardin Imaginaire Summer 2024 collection. And I have to say this collection is prettier in person than it is in the photos and it is just, I ended up picking up more items than I expected. It's just so pretty. So I picked up both of the highlighter duos as well as four of the six new Stilo Ombre A Contour sticks. And by the way, these are all limited edition, the entire collection's limited edition. And then I also picked up the lightest of the new Balm Essentiel sticks. Now, before we begin, I do want to give a shout out to Paloma and Jalissa at the Aventura Boutique, which is where I purchased all of these items. So thank you so much for the great service. I'll leave their information down below in the description box. And we were able to get these up a little bit early because their boutique is in the process of moving. You know, they had a renovation. So because that's occurring during the launch, they were able to sell these a little early and I was able to get permission to showcase these in advance. So I hope this helps you make some of your shopping decisions because the entire collection is limited edition and I'm sure some of these items are gonna sell pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead, we're gonna start off with swatches and let's start off, we'll start off with the Balm Essentiel. So if you haven't tried the Balm Essentiel, these are like balmy highlighting sticks from Chanel and they do have a wet balmy texture to them. So they never 100% set down. What I like to do for application, you can see if you go heavier, you can also buff that out. I like to personally put a little bit here on my finger and then dab it on up here. And that's what I did today. So these are, this is a shade Midnight Kiss. This is the lightest one and there's a deeper one as well. So we're gonna take a look at some comparisons, but first let's take a look at this in action. So the Balm Essentiel from Chanel has eight grams of product. This is the shade Moonlight Kiss. It's made in Italy and we have an 18 month shelf life. So as I mentioned, this is primarily a highlighting stick and in the demos here, I'm showing you how much of it you can see if you put foundation on top. I'm using a 50-50 mix of the Clay de Peau Radiant Natural and Radiant Matte Foundations in shade I-10 and then what it looks like on top. So according to Chanel, this is a moisturizing highlighting balm that imparts subtle radiance to the face. Its texture melts onto the skin and reflects the light. Balm Essentiel creates a glimmering effect that sculpts the face, enhancing both sophisticated makeup and the most natural looks. With its on-the-go format and elegant, understated design, it's easy to use on the face, lips, and eyes all day long. Now, you can definitely use this on the lips and eyes. If you use it on the eyes, for me at least, I get creasing pretty quickly, so just use a tiny bit. It would be my recommendation. And it is very nice as a topper for the lips. So I have not used it as a topper here today. I'm actually wearing the Chanel Glossomer in uh, 119, which is one of my favorite shades. But you can see that this is a really beautiful champagne, kind of like an ivory champagne with a touch of gold and a touch of pink in here. So it's kind of like that warm champagne with a, a a little bit of tan in there but as you move you can see a little bit of pink shimmer in there a little bit of a pink reflect so it is a little bit different than shades that we have seen before and I think it's a nice highlighting stick I wasn't gonna pick this up because personally I prefer sticks that um, don't have as much of a, a tacky presence afterwards and this isn't really tacky per se it's not sticky but it is dewy so I do like the Chanel Balm Essentiel um, but let's take a look at a few comparisons. So I only have one other Chanel Balm Essentiel at the moment, and this is a limited edition shade from a while back called Ensoleil. And you can see that this is really gonna be much more of a warm rose with some peach in there. But you can see kind of the texture of the formula, how dewy they are, and the type of shimmer you have in there. You're not gonna get any large glitter chunks, but you're definitely gonna get sheen and shimmer, some very fine, finely milled shimmer in there. Another shade I wanted to take a look at, this is Westman Atelier in Nectar. And you can see here, that these two shades, let me put Nectar right next to it, you can see that they're actually pretty close. 
The difference here is that the Chanel has a bit more gold in it. It's going to be a little bit warmer, a bit more tan. Nectar is a little bit more sheer peach in comparison. So that is West Atelier Nectar. And then I want to take a look at uh, just a couple more. This is the Addiction Tokyo stick in, this is the glow stick in Above the Moon, which is one of my go-tos. And what I love about this balm is this one does not have any sort of tacky or balmy finish. It really just kind of sets onto the skin. It's very sheer. So you can see this is going to be a little bit cooler, but we still have kind of that champagne shade with a touch of gold. However, we do not have the pink reflect that you have in the Chanel. And then the last one I want to take a look at is the Surratt stick in Diamante, which is another favorite of mine. Again, like the Addiction Tokyo, this one doesn't have that balmy texture, but you can see it's also, um, it's a, a little bit like the base isn't quite as as consistent or smooth as the addiction tokyo you can see the shimmer here is perhaps not as finely milled these are both favorites though um the surat and the addiction tokyo personally so one more time i hope these shades here were helpful we have the new chanel in midnight kiss or moonlight kiss i'm sorry and then we have west Atelier nectar which is also here this is the chanel in ensoleil and here we have Addiction Tokyo in Above the Moon and Surat Torche Lumiere in Diamante. So let me know what your favorites are. I'd love to know which highlighting sticks are your go-tos. And overall, I have to say that this new shade here from Chanel, I think it's a really pretty shade. And for me, I will probably use it a lot kind of like as a topper for lips just to give a little bit of shimmer and a little bit of that balmy texture. And as a highlight. So I think it's a really pretty shade and definitely one that you could use on a regular daily basis. All right, and let's go ahead and move on to the blush and highlighter duo. So I did pick up both of these and to say, I think they are very pretty. So they do come in a velour pouch. Then we have our traditional Chanel packaging. So push button here, and then we have a plastic tray with a half moon synthetic brush. So concave or convex, depending on which way you want to hold it. And then we have a beautiful garden embossing on the actual product. So I almost didn't pick up this one. This one is the shade Gold and Peach. And we're going to put this uh, vertically here. So here's the blush. And I want to show you here, we'll buff this in a little bit out here. I want to show you this blush even if you isolate just the blush you do have a little bit of a golden reflect that comes out when you buff that in so it's not matte this is going to be a satin finish then the highlighter shade here is going to be a golden hue now a lot of the chanel golden highlighters we've seen recently have been a little bit more of the burnished gold a little bit more brown in there. This is going to be a little bit more of a yellow gold, but it's a soft yellow, a pale yellow. Think like more filtered golden sunlight. And then mixing the two together, we get kind of this golden peach shade. It's really beautiful. And I have to say, I think that this is a really beautiful highlighter. So this, the nice thing about this is it's definitely suitable for warm skin tones. But if you are neutral or even slightly cool, you can still wear this. The blush, you can definitely wear. It's going to be more neutral. We have, it's, it's a, a deep peach, but it's got a little bit of coral in there. So there's a little bit of pink. So it is wearable for a variety of skin tones. But then the highlighter is definitely warm. So you can control the warmth by controlling how much highlighter you put into that. So we'll take a look at some demos for that in just a minute. Moving on to the other one here, we have Light and Berry. And the promo photos for this made it look like it was purple, but you can see that it's actually more of a fuchsia berry. And let's take a look at this. And here is the berry shade here. And if we buff that in, 
again, you can see that this is gonna have a satin finish. We do have a little bit of kind of that plum berry in there, kind of like, um, almost like a raspberry mixed with, uh, yeah, it's mostly like raspberry mixed with a little bit of plum. And then our highlighter shade is actually going to be a soft pink. And you can see it's iridescent, it is pink. So this is our highlighter, put a little bit of that right here. And then if we were to mix these together, we get a nice shimmery pink blush. And this can become pretty intense. So let's put a little bit of that buffed in right there. So those are the blushes. And let's take a look at these in action. Now the Chanel blush and highlighter duos have six and a half grams of product. They're made in Italy and they have an 18 month shelf life. And according to Chanel, it says for her first collection, Amy Drama has created an imaginary garden in which flora meets fantasy, a reflection of a dreamlike natural world, one that was an endless source of inspiration for Gabrielle Chanel. Discover a limited edition powder duo that pairs an intense matte blush together with a pearlescent highlighter. And although it says matte, I swear it's really more of a satin finish when you buff that out. I, I you know, even the very first swatch, just isolating the powder, it did not appear matte to me. So <laughs> continuing, it says the Jardin Imaginaire Blush Duo exclusive creation enhances the complexion, accentuates the cheekbones, and illuminates the entire face. Fine and silky, the powder is easy to apply and comes in a travel-friendly compact that you can take anywhere for touch-ups throughout the day. The powder's embossed design features flowers with the Chanel Double C logo at the center, a tribute to a dreamlike natural world. The golden peach is described as a fresh matte coral and a golden ivory highlighter. The light and berry is described as a matte fuchsia purple and a pearly white with pink and lilac shimmer. And these are both limited edition. So it recommends, they recommend either using each of the powders on its own, using them in tandem, mixing them together, oh, and you can use the brush that is included. So, Overall, I have to say, I think these are both beautiful blush and highlighter duos. I'm really happy that I picked up both of them. I do like them. The powder texture and formula seem very nice. They're easy to use. They don't feel like they are ones that are gonna get like hard pan quickly or anything like that. Not like the Chanel blushes in the permanent collection. So I think these are really well done. I think they are gorgeous. I do, again, think that it's more of a satin color versus more of a matte, maybe more of a satin matte, but there is a little bit of shimmer when you buff that out. The highlighters, you can definitely make them a little bit more subtle or intense. And you can see here in the demos that I wanted to use brushes I have duplicates of, so I have no color transfer between the two. So we have the Sonia G Cheek Pro that I use for the application originally for both the blush and the highlighters for each shade. And again, I'm using a new brush for each compact. And then we've also buffed it in a bit more with the Sonia G Smooth Buffer and applied the highlighter with the Sonia G Fan Pro. So you can see a few different applications. For today's application and for mixing the two blushes together, I use one of my favorite brushes. This is a Chikahoto and Bobo brush, CH1. It's a 3D angled brush and it's very soft, but the great thing about it is you can get just a little bit of color and build it up very easily. So it allows you to not take on too much of that pigment right away, but yet you can still build up to maximum pigment. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to highlight this brush here with the compact so you can see, because particularly the light and berry, it can go on very pigmented with just a little bit of product. So I actually think the pigmentation is slightly stronger in that one than in the peach and gold or golden peach. So because of that, you know, if you have fair skin like I do, you definitely want to start off with a softer brush, go with less is more, as I did in the demo for the look I'm using right now. So overall, though, I have to say, I think that these are beautiful blush and highlighter duos. I'm very happy that I picked up both of these. I think they are gorgeous. Let's go ahead and take a look at just a few comparisons. 
All right, so I just redid the swatches so that we can put some comparisons right here so we can see the colors adjacent. So we have the blush blending out to the highlighter here, and then I put just a plain swatch of just the highlighter right here next to it so you can see for sure what it looks like without any pigmentation. So I did the same thing with the light and berry here. So you can see we go down into the highlighter and this part here is just the highlighter. So let's take a look at some additional products. Now, the first thing I want to look at is the Chanel Blanc Pearl. So this is an eyeshadow single. I'm actually gonna put this one right here. And then I'm gonna put the highlighter from Chanel in the Light and Berry right next to it. So you can see how similar they are. The Light and Berry highlighter is a cooler pink. You can see that the Blanc Pearl has pink and gold shimmer, kind of like a pink and gold reflect. And you can even see a little bit of green in there occasionally when the light hits it. So you can see that the Light and Berry highlighter is gonna be much cooler. And it says pink and lilac. The way they mix, I don't really see too much of the lilac separately, but you can tell that that pink definitely has a bit of a lilac base. There's a little bit more blue to the base shade there. So those would be those together. So again, we have the eyeshadow single Blanc Pearl, which is a multi-use top coat versus the Light and Berry highlighter. Now let's take a look at some blushes. This was the Le Beige blush in Corel Givre which came out this past winter and I wanted to see how that compared because they are going to be both coral shades but you can see that this is going to be a bit brighter in the Le Beige versus the new one which has a little bit more brown. We got a little bit more red in the Corel Givre. Let's continue with the Le Beige. This is Rose Polaire which is actually a warm pink so this, I'm gonna put this one up at top because it's definitely, it doesn't really match with either of them, but I wanted to show you how similar it is. So it's definitely not gonna be super close to either, but it's gonna be closer to the peach and gold, or the gold and peach rather. And then this is the Mauve Glossé. Now this looks like a nice uh, mauve shade here, but it's actually gonna be much warmer, almost more of like a brick red, with a little bit, it's got more of that reddish berry versus more of a pinky purple berry. So that is going to be the difference with the Le Beige blushes. This is the Rose Coquillage blush duo that came out recently. Let's take a look at these shades. So here is the coral shade from here and that did not swatch well, let me redo that. You can see that that one just doesn't swatch as well, but that is going to be a bit of, it's actually a pretty similar shade here. Those are pretty close, but this formulation is a little bit more firmly pressed, so you don't get quite as much pigment at the same time. And our pink shade here is gonna be a bit warmer. Again, the pigmentation level is gonna be much softer. All right, and then we have this duo here. This was Fleur de Printemps. I have to say, I really love this duo. Um, I think it is a really great one from Chanel. And these are both of those shades. You can see that, again, the colors aren't gonna match exactly to those, but we're still kind of in the same color family. It's gonna be closer in pigmentation, or closer in color to the lighter shade, but this is more shimmery. So overall, it's kind of more like these two mixed together. And this shade here has a little bit more pink. So I do think, you know, this is a great one. Similar color family, not the same though. And this is the beige Ro Rosé et Mauve. And this again is gonna be a bit too deep and it's definitely got more like eggplant purple in there. Pigmentation is gonna be a little bit lighter uh, with one swipe, but yeah, just pretty different shades. Chanel really doesn't have a shade quite like that. So let's take a look at a few other brands for some similar ones. This is 302 from Valentino. I believe they call this one Pink is Punk. And let me put that one on this side here. You can see that the shade here is pretty similar. We have maybe slightly more pink in there, but honestly pretty close. And this formula is very velvety. I love the texture. It's kind of like a velvet gel powder texture. And then this is the Gucci in number nine, Intense Plum. So this is gonna be a bit more red, but I did wanna kind of compare that as well. 
Let me just add a little bit more of the Chanel there. There we go. There's the Chanel a little bit deeper. And you can see again that Valentino is a pretty close comparison. I also wanted to take a look at the new Chantecaille blushes. This is a shade Energy. It's not really going to match any of these, but I did want to kind of just put this one here so you can see it because we do get this lovely shimmery finish that is very similar to when you mix the highlighter and blush together. The color here is not going to be the same, but the finish is pretty similar. So that's the golden peach mixed. This one here is the shade Confidence, which is a light pink. You can see it's going to be a warmer pink than the Chanel. But again, similar finish there. And then a few highlighters. This is the Pearl Lumiere from Chantecaille. And you can see it's going to be more white. And then this is the Tom Ford in Nude Sand. This is their Summer Soleil highlighter. I wanted to see how that compares to the highlighter in just the Chanel. So we have a little bit more brown. It's a little bit deeper but they're very, very close. I would say that these are definitely very close shades. I also want to take a look at Grand Paradis. This is from the Soleil Neige collection. And this is gonna be, you know, just a little bit lighter. It's actually more champagne, a little bit more ivory in it in comparison. Same type of color family, but a little bit lighter and softer. And then we might as well take a look at the Rose Irise from Tom Ford in that Soleil Neige collection as well. You can see it's gonna be a warmer pink. So I don't really have a pink highlighter that is quite that same shade as the Chanel. So those would be my best comparisons. I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you think. Let's take a look at these just one more time here. We have the Chanel Gold and Peach here. This is the Chantecaille Energy. This is the Chanel Mix together. Then we have the Chanel Le Beige. This is the Rose. This is the Corel Givre. This is going to be the duo, the Roses Coquillage. And we're looking at the peachy shade from that here and the rosy shade from that right here with the Light and Berry duo. And then these two shades are from the Fleur Printemps. And then for highlighters, we have the Tom Ford. This is going to be the Nude Sand followed by the Grand Paradis. And then for the Chanel Light and Berry, over here we have the Valentino. This is going to be number 302, which I believe is pink as punk. The Gucci 09 Intense Plump. And then here we have Chantecaille in Confidence. And then over here, this is going to be the Chanel from the Le Beige collection in the Mauve Glossé. Again, this is part of the Roses Coquillage. Then this one here is from the Beige A Rose. Then we have a couple of highlighters. This is the Tom Ford Rose Irise and the Chantecaille Pearl Lumiere. So I hope those were helpful. And let me know what you think of these. Let's go ahead and move on to the Stilo Ombre A Contours. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the Stilo Ombre A Contour. So if you're not familiar with these, these are the eye crayons from Chanel. They can be used for eyeshadow, eyeliner, or a coal liner. And we do have a sharpener on the end. Number is on the bottom. It's also in the little color code. And then we have a name. So I personally love the Cielo Ombre Contours. They've been favorites of mine for years. The last few that have come out though, it's been weird. Like you buff it out and you get a really warm brown base to them, kind of regardless of the color. I have to say, these don't do that. So very happy with that. And we've got some new limited edition shades. So let's take a look at the swatches here. This one, I have been using these, so you can see my tip is not sharp anymore. But this one here is 42 Celestial Pink. And we'll just go ahead and put them here. And this is Celestial Pink. So you can see this is going to be a, it's a glittery pink. You have a bit of a warm brown base to it, like a, a tan with a lot of pink in there. It's very shimmery. This is definitely a shimmery shade. 
And actually, let's go ahead and just kind of buff a little bit of this out. This is really nice for, um, you know, like in our corner or as a topper even. So you can see you can really get that light. This is a very thin, weightless, silky on the eyes. So really easy to use. Next, we have 44 Nuage Bleu. And I did, I banged the top when I was uh, doing one of the eye demos. I was trying to quickly put on a cap and I kind of dinged it. So you can see I've already done to that. And this is just a really nice soft aqua blue, but you can see when you buff these out, you're just getting a lighter version of that color, not any sort of other shade kind of mixed in there. So that is definitely a plus for me. And then we have 46, which is Neon Dahlia. And this is my favorite. This is also, I mean, this is incredibly beautiful as an eyeliner as well. I mean, it's not super deep. It's kind of like a medium depth. And look how softly and lightly you can blend these out. So you do have some working time to blend these out and I'll show you that in the demo, but you probably have about 30 seconds, maybe even a full minute to truly blend it out. You definitely wanna go in the first 30 seconds or so if you want to blend it much, but you know, I would say it doesn't fully set for a minute. So this is 48, which is Dream Leaf. So we have 42, 44, 46, and 48. There are two additional shades. There's a bright orange and like a coppery brown. I was tempted to get them, but I didn't think I'd use those as much. I have to say I really like these and I love, you know, how easily they blend and just, you know, let's take a look at them. So the Stilo Ombre A Contour from Chanel has 0.8 grams of product. They're made in Italy. Again, we have an 18 month shelf life. So that's gonna be true of all of the items in this collection. These particular shades are limited edition. And you know, this line has been around for a long time from Chanel. However, they've really cut back and they only have like mm, four, maybe five shades that you can find on a regular basis that actually aren't always that easy to find. So I have to say, I'm really hopeful that this means that we're going to be seeing more of the Cielo Ombre A Contour in the future. So I have to say also formula wise, these feel, I don't have any brand new ones from these. They feel very similarly on the lids from how I recall the older ones, but they do feel perhaps a little thinner, like a little bit easier to blend out, maybe a little bit of a thinner formula in general, more, more silk in there, a little bit maybe more silicone. So the pink is described as a shimmery pink beige, while the Nuage Bleu is a soft denim blue, I actually think it's definitely more aqua. Uh, you know, think of like that traditional like blue-green crayon from Crayola. That's what it looks like. And then we have the Neon Dahlia, which is a shimmery bluish violet. And it's a really beautiful, kind of like your classic purple. Now we have shimmer in all of these, by the way. This one here, the Neon Dahlia has more of a silver shimmer while the Nuage Bleu, that one, the shimmer on that is not as intense, but it looks like we have more of a champagne shimmer, not quite gold, not quite silver. Whereas the Celestial Pink definitely has a lot of pink and gold glitter. That would be the sparkliest one out of the four I picked up followed by the Neon Dahlia and our Dream Leaf, which is described as a shimmery acid green. So both the Neon Dahlia and the Dream Leaf both have kind of that silver shimmer in there. The one that is the least sparkly out of the four I picked up is the Nuage Bleu. But again, we do have some champagne shimmer in that one. Now, according to Chanel, this is described as having a medium thick tip. The Cielo Ombre A Contour may be used as a coal liner or eyeshadow. In a few strokes, this three-in-one pen enhances your eyes according to your desire. Its creamy, silky texture glides along the skin and eye contour for easy, intuitive application with a soft touch. The long-lasting Stilo Ombre Contour keeps its color intensity throughout the day. And I would have to agree with that. These do last all day. They go on super easily. You, I love to use these as eyeliners as well, um, but they're just really easy to use. That's one of my favorite aspects of them. 
and they would traditionally be one of my favorite eye crayons if they came if they have more colors on a regular basis because some of my favorites of all time have been from this line like the beige pearl that came out several years back i used that one up and i bought a backup of that one as well so these are crease proof on me they last all day you know it's been it's been pretty warm and hot and uh, still no issues with any sort of creasing or smudging. And as I mentioned, you definitely have some playtime here. For maximum playtime, you wanna work within the first 30 seconds, but you have about a minute or so before you have, you know, a full setting here. And then even then, after it has pretty much set, if you really rub really hard, you can actually get some some movement or transfer for the next few minutes. So just something to note there, you do have perhaps a little bit more play time than you might with some other brands, but it will kind of stay put where you put it. And yeah, overall, I have to say, I think they are gorgeous. So let's take a look at these shades one more time. And you can see 42, this is Celestial Pink, 44, Nuage Blue, this is 46, Neon Dahlia, and 48, Dream Leaf. All right, so I actually do have a couple more of the Stilo Ombre Contour. So this is the beige Perlet that I mentioned uh, that I actually, this is my backup of it. So this is that one. And this, was, this is a favorite of mine. You can see it's a really beautiful kind of warm brown taupe. This one also, you know, fades out beautifully. Really beautiful shade there. Definitely a favorite of mine. And the ones that came out after that, like this one here, Contour Graphite. Okay, and you can see, so here's the Contour Graphite. And it's a little hard, harder to see on the arm versus the eye, but you do have a bit of a warmer undertone to this than you do built up. This one's probably not the best example. I did get rid of the ones that, you know, really had a strong warm brown undertone to them because they just didn't work for me when I blended them out. But I want to go over a few other comparisons as well. So this is a Bobbi Brown in Periwinkle. This is a relatively new shade. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this one here so you can kind of see how that compares because although it's not a Chanel Stilo, it kind of goes along with some of these shades here, you know, you have kind of that bluish, pinkish shift to it. And then we also have Sunrise Pink from Bobbi Brown, which is going to be a warmer pink. And this also has kind of a gold reflect. You can see it's going to be a bit more pink than the Chanel Celestial Pink, which has more of that beige in there. So both of them are beautiful shades. And I have to say, though, between the, the two formulas, the Bobbi Brown texture is just a little bit creamier than the Chanel. Then from Victoria Beckham, we have the shade Macaron, which is a matte pink. We'll put this here. And this is a slightly drier stick compared to the Chanel. So we're kind of right in between there. And then we have a matte blue in Cornflower. I wanted to see how this one, I mean, it's not really gonna match, but I wanted to see how that fit in with the Nuage Bleu and the Neon Dahlia. So those were just a few quick comparisons. I hope this has been helpful. Overall, I have to say I am very happy with the Chanel Jardin Imaginaire collection. I think it was very well done and you know, it's fun. Now, if you are somebody who doesn't like shimmer, Mm, this collection is probably not for you if everything has shimmer. But if you're looking for some fun colors for the summer to play around with, this is a great collection for people who are looking for some bright, fun shades. If, again, you can definitely create some more subdued, everyday looks, you know, that are work appropriate, but you can also build them up and have a bit more fun with them. So let me know what you think and let me know if you have any plans to pick any of these up. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you very soon. Have a great day.